We have already talked a good bit about attitudes, what these are, how they are structured, what kind of components do they have, but the question still is, why are attitudes still so important when we are studying organizational behavior? And in this video I would like to give you an answer. The behavior or organizational behavior follows attitudes and that is why the attitudes are so important for us because the employees within the organization are going to have some attitudes and it is going to influence or even decide, determine what kind of behavior they are going to have. So let's take a look at it. There are going to be two important ideas within this video. One is this logic flow, how can behavior follow attitudes? And secondly, we are going to talk about quite important term, cognitive dissonance. So let's see. At first, we have some sort of attitude. That is our belief. What do we believe in? Let's say that I am of an attitude that US cars are good. Now, what kind of behavior I am going to have? Well, let's say that I'm going to uh, perform some action, some activity, and I'm going to buy a US car. This really makes sense. If I believe that US cars are good, it's quite logical that I'm going to buy a US car. But what is in between there? So what is here? Uh, let me just highlight it because this is important for us. There is something we call moderating variables. Moderating variables. So that we know that attitude can predict, can predict the behavior. And this happens through moderating variables. And what these are? There are four main ones. First is importance of the attitude. So we have importance. So how important it is uh, that I consider US cars good? Well, maybe I as well consider, let's say, uh, let's say European cars good, but I think that US cars are really much better and it is a super important attitude, super important belief for me. So I'm definitely going to buy a US car. So the importance is simply moderating this attitude towards behavior. Secondly, there is some sort of a correspondence to behavior. This is a little bit more tricky to uh, explain, but think about it. How does the behavior correspond to an attitude? Well, this is pretty straightforward. If I think that US cars are good, well, I'm going to buy a US car. If it would be, let's say, if I would consider US products, let's say if the, this would be US products are good. Well, it is not so straightforward because car is only one of the US products. So there is also a correspondence that is a moderating variable. Then we have accessibility to behavior. So we have accessibility. Maybe I'm not able to afford the US car. Maybe I will have to go, let's say, for a bicycle. So due to that, because I do not have money, this behavior is not accessible to me. So it is another very strong and important moderating variable. Finally, we have direct experience. Maybe I believe that the US cars are good, but in the past I did not have just a good experience and I had also a bad experience and that they will also influence uh, this, this logic flow. So, as we see, really the behavior follows the attitudes. Now let's take a look at something that we call cognitive dissonance, because that is closely related. Cognitive dissonance is any incompatibility so incompatibility between two or more attitudes or between behavior and attitudes. So let's imagine an example. Still, let's keep the US cars. Let's say that I have some attitude. So this is going to be my this is going to be my attitude. And it says that I think US cars are bad. Now we have some sort of a behavior. So let's say this is going to be something that happens. So we can consider it being a, being a behavior or some sort of an attitude. My dad buys me US car. Well, these, these two are really incompatible. So let's highlight it. These two, these two are incompatible. Incompatible. 
And what are we going to do? Well, we are trying simply to diminish this incompatibility because we do not like it. It's not comfortable for us. So it's not comfortable for us. So what I can do uh, to feel more comfortable? Well, I can either try to change my, I can try to change my attitude. So I can try to change and I will think that your cars are good. And I will simply keep my father's car or I can change the behavior. I can try to sell. I can try to sell this car. This car. So as you can see, when we get to a cognitive dissonance, cognitive dissonance is everywhere around us. We quite often meet some incompatibility between two or more attitudes or the behavior and the attitude. And we always try to solve it somehow. Either we change our attitudes or we can try to change our behavior. So as you have seen, behavior follows attitudes and as well there is important term of cognitive dissonance.